Everyone, welcome to the pod. We'll play with CJ. Today we're going to focus in on uh, the play of Brandy Carlo in tonight's preseason game between the Boston Bruins and Columbus Blue Jackets. I was there, um, you know, got to watch him play a lot in his own zone, and uh, I was impressed. Some things I think he needs to improve on, uh, like, you know, with all young defensemen. I mean, it's easier to forget he's only 19 years old, but for my money right now, he's the best defense prospect the Bruins have outside of Charlie McAvoy. Um, and that's that's a close one, too. It's closer than I think a lot of people realize. Before I bring up the name Jacob Zaborl, I was not impressed with him. Not tonight. Had one really nice pass beyond that. Sloppy turnovers, poor defensive play, and missed assignments. Just looked at way over his head, which, you know, a 19-year-old defenseman playing against NHL talent, I get it. But, you know, the reality is McAvoy and, and Carlo are both at home. On the, and Lawson's probably up there, too. Things I liked about Carlo. Uh, got took a big hit from Oliver Bjorkstrand, his former Western Hockey League rival, like the first second shift of the game, and you know didn't uh, didn't let that get to him. You know it's easy for a big defenseman to get cut down by a smaller guy, and you know kind of feel castrated if you will. But you know he played his game, played it, played it tough. Uh, had one bad read on a pass that led to an icing. Wasn't thrilled with that. Um, but th- there was one play at the puck behind his own net. He kind of, he looks like a quarterback scrambling beyond the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, and then he, he skated past the two four checkers and then, you know, took it up by and, and took it into the offensive zone and, you know, the Bruins got a shot out of it. Um, you know, I want to see that. I want to see him bushing the play. He's six foot seven. He's a, you know, defensive defenseman, but he's got better puck skills than he gets credit for. And if, you, if you watched my interview with him two years ago, when he was in Boston for the WJC camp, I mean, he wants he wanted his whole thing was to work on his, you know, skating out the puck out of danger, you know, making plays offensively in addition to, you know, being a shutdown guy defensively. So, you know, it's clear to me that that's you know definitely been a thing for him. Um, took an interference penalty on Brandon Sod, uh, ran, uh, ran Sod right into the the crease, you know. Sad loves to be in those high traffic areas. You know, it's how he's made his living. So, you know, trying to get under his skin, get him to stay on the outside. Um, not a great penalty to take, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, some other notes. I uh, had a really good shot in overtime with, out there with 15 seconds left. Uh, I, I like that in the three on three. That's, you know, a situation for a guy like that to possibly be in over his head, but the, the coach and staff had confidence in him. And I get it's a preseason game, but. You know, he's, uh, he's good. He earns that nice time. A uh, very typical shot, if you know if that makes any sense. You know, it's nice low off the ice when it takes from the point. I uh, had an assist on Dan Hines' goal and uh, looked, in my opinion, to be the Bruins' best defenseman tonight. Given the fact that the Bees have seven defensemen on one-way contracts, it's going to be an uphill battle for them to make the team out of camp. But we'll see what happens. I... We'll see him this season for sure. I don't know to what level, how many games, what kind of role he'll be playing, but he's definitely a top six defenseman the Bruins have right now. Well, mostly because all their defensemen suck. But anyway, that's all I got. So the power play with CJ on my takeaways from Brandon Carlo in the preseason game against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the offseason and beyond. Later, guys.